Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg's HDTV Technology Guide. My name is Paul and today we're going to be talking about HDTVs. If you've never bought an HDTV before or if you're looking to buy a new one and you want to familiarize yourself with the latest technology, you have come to the right place. We're going to start with the basics and work our way on up. So for starters, let's talk about resolution because resolution is really what makes an HDTV HD or high definition. Resolution is measured in pixels and more specifically the number of pixels measured vertically. There's a few standards for television resolutions and uh, if you go back 10 or 15 years to the age where most of us were using those huge CR CRT televisions, cathode ray tube, uh, the big bulky ones, the standard definition at that time was 480 or 480p. Uh, now there's a couple different standards for high definition televisions. One is 720, 720 pixels, just like our plasma right here. That's also sometimes known as ED, or enhanced definition. And then you have full HD, like this one right here, which is 1080 pixels measured top to bottom. Now we've zoomed way in on our plasma television here, so you can actually see the individual pixels that make up the image. And if you're able to count those, you'd be able to count 720 lines measured from the bottom to the top, or the top to the bottom from wherever you want to start counting from. Now apart from those typical television resolutions of 480, 720, and 1080, you might see a letter at the end. The letter generally refers to the video signal being sent to the television. Usually it's 1080p, for example, or 1080i. P means parallel. It refers to the refresh rate of the television. We're going to come back to refresh rate. But basically parallel means it's going to refresh all of those lines of video all at the same time. I means interlaced, and it means it's going to alternately refresh the even and odd lines. Now, it does it so fast that, generally speaking, it's undetectable to the human eye. But usually, you want a 1080p signal that's a bit preferable to 1080i. Fortunately, most of the high-definition televisions that are on the market today can support both types of video signal input. So now that we've gone over HDTV resolution, let's talk about the typical specs that you'll see when you're shopping for an HDTV. Here's a list, and we're going to start off with size. That's generally the most apparent feature when you're looking at a television. Size is measured in inches, and it's measured from corner to corner, from right down here all the way up to the opposite corner. In case anyone's wondering, both of the TVs here are 42 inch high definition televisions. Now, that was a pretty easy method to determine what size television you should get, and it's based on where you usually be sitting. So get out a ruler or a tape measure, uh, tape measure is probably a little bit easier, and measure the distance from, say, your couch where you're going to be sitting to where the TV is going to be. Take that distance, cut it into a third, and that's about the size of a television you should get. So for instance, if you're going to be sitting 12 feet away, a third of that is 4 feet, 4 feet is 48 inches, so look for a 47 to 50 inch television. Next up on our list of HDTV specs is contrast ratio. And contrast ratio, technically speaking, is measured by taking the brightness of peak white, such as the white that you see at the edge of our Newegg logo over there, and dividing it by the brightness of black that the television can display. Generally speaking, with contrast ratio, the larger the difference between the two numbers, the better. But bear in mind that there are different flavors of contrast ratio out there, such as dynamic contrast ratio. Those may vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. So if you can find the strictly contrast ratio measurement of your TV, you should be good to go. But from a practical standpoint, contrast ratio really only has a strong effect if you're going to be viewing your TV in a very dark environment. So if you have lots of lights around, you're not going to really be able to appreciate a really large or great contrast ratio that the television has. If you plan to set up a home theater and you have curtains closed in a very dimly lit or darkened room and you're going to be viewing your TV there, then you should focus on contrast ratio. Make sure that it has a very good uh, divergence between the two numbers so that you can appreciate the difference between the light and the dark that the TV can display. Next up is viewing angle, and viewing angle is pretty straightforward. Uh, as compared to viewing the television straight on, it's how far you can view it from the side before you start to get refraction and coloration issues. Now, if you have a TV in a small room and you just have a single couch in front of it, viewing angle is not going to be as much of a concern. But if your home theater has a very wide, you know, a few couches in front of it, and you want to make sure that you can have large groups over to all view the TV from as far to the side as possible, make sure you get a TV that has a very wide viewing angle. Moving right along, next up we have refresh rate. And refresh rate, as mentioned earlier, is the rate at which the image on the screen refreshes. So if the colors change, then the little pixel will change color every time that image refreshes. Now the standard refresh rate is 60 hertz, or 60 times per second. Uh, but bear in mind that most 
uh, film and television is recorded at 30 frames per second. So you might ask yourself, why do I need an image that refreshes at 60 hertz if everything's recorded at 30 hertz? Well, basically it will make the image sharper, but also as you get into higher refresh rates, it enables certain special features like 3D television. So uh, moving from 60 hertz up from there, you'll have 120 hertz, and you'll need a 120 hertz refresh rate TV as well as a 3D capable TV in order to play back 3D content. Uh, you also find 240 hertz refresh uh, rate televisions. And then you also find plasmas, and plasmas are sort of unique because each little plasma pixel there has a native refresh rate, and it's at about 600 hertz. But refresh rate is important if you like to watch, say, for instance, high speed, high action movies uh, or sports events. Because you'll notice with a higher refresh rate, the image will get much sharper, and when it's displaying action and moving pictures on the screen, you'll get a much better and clearer image as you watch that type of content. Next on the list of TV specs is connection types, and you will want to pay special attention to this depending on what types of devices you want to connect to your TV. Here on our LG TV on the back, we have a few examples of connection types available. At the top, we're going to start with these USB ports, and these are optional. Not all TVs have or need these, but basically this allows you to plug in, for example, a USB thumb drive with stored audio or video files that the TV can play directly from there. Next up right here, we have all four of these HDMI ports, and HDMI is probably the best connection type to go with that's available today. Not only does it carry both an audio and a video signal on the same cable, but it also supports high definition 1080p, as well as HD surround sound. Moving right along, here in the back we have a few older connection types. These are audio video in, and if you have an old VCR, for example, you'll probably have these connections available. The yellow plug here is video, and the white and red plug carry your left and right audio. Uh, these can only display standard definition, so bear that in mind. Here we have component inputs. Sometimes these are called RGB uh, because there is a red, a green, and a blue plug, but that's not a strict definition. Uh, but component inputs can carry a high definition 1080 signal. Uh, and basically these th red, green, and blue plugs here are your video inputs. And then just like the uh, standard video in, you have uh, left and right audio. Over here on the left, you can see a LAN or Ethernet port, and that is because this is an internet-capable television. Next to that, you can see an RGB input, and this is an old-school analog computer connection. So you can plug your computer into this TV. Bear in mind that an RGB input does not support high-definition video. So if you do have a computer you want to connect, you might want to use your DVI or HDMI out from the computer to connect to one of your HDMI ports. Uh, next to this is simply an auto in to go along with that RGB. This is an actually this is actually an optical digital audio output. That's known as a Toslink plug, and you can use that to connect the television over to your high definition uh, amplifier or receiver. Next to that is antenna or cable in, and this is uh, just like you may have had with an older television. But basically, you can route a simple antenna to this to get over the air broadcast or you can connect that to your cable box if it supports that connection. Over here we have uh, the same plugs that we saw on the back which are RGB or I should say component plugs there and audio as well as an, a video plug there. Now the reason I'm mentioning these is because all of our plugs here are recessed and they actually have a routing area right along here, this little channel. So not only is it important to uh, keep in mind which connections you have available on the TV, but if you're planning to wall mount a flat screen TV, it really helps to have this recessed area so you can route your cables along the back and you don't have to bear that in mind when you're mounting it to a wall. And finally on our list of HDTV specs is HDTV technology. I've been avoiding it this whole time, but there are different types of technology that HDTVs can be built on. We're going to start with one that I don't have an example of for you here, but that is DLP. That stands for Digital Light Processing. It was developed by Texas Instruments, and it's generally used in rear projection televisions these days. You can get a very, very big rear projection DLP television. Uh, so if you're looking for something that's huge, that's probably the way to go right now. Uh, next up on the list is LCD, and this TV here on the left is an LCD television. LCD stands for Liquid Crystal Display, and basically each of the little pixels on the screen there is made up with a tiny little pixel of liquid crystal. Now the unique thing about Liquid Crystal is that it does not have an inherent light. Liquid Crystal can modify light that's, that's going through it, but it does not light up itself. So, 
Uh, original LCDs had CCFL backlights. This is a CCFL light. This is kind of like the ones that you might see up in the ceiling at your office building. But those are all behind the television and uh, they shine through the LCD that creates the colors and that's how you get the picture on the screen. Uh, CCFL backlit LCDs are generally a lot less expensive than the newer technology, the LED backlit ones like this. So if you're looking for a TV that is uh, cost effective, you probably want to go with a CCFL backlit LCD. But as mentioned right here, we also have some hybrid technology LCD TVs as well. These are LED LCDs. LED stands for light emitting diode, so the actual rear backlight of this television is lit by LEDs. And there's two ways to do that. There is edge lit LEDs, where you have LEDs at the edge that project light across the back, and then you actually have backlit LED LCD TVs, and those will have uh, special features such as local dimming, where it can actually turn off the backlight if, for instance, like down here where you have a big black area on the screen. Those will have much better contrast ratio. Uh, so if you are looking for a really high quality LCD TV, you either get an LED edge lit or an LED backlit. Moving along, we have plasmas, and right over here we have a plasma television. This is a 720 P Plasma TV, it's made by LG. And plasmas are unique in that each little plasma pixel in there has its own inherent light. When the plasma is excited in the pixel, it lights up and it also changes color. So it doesn't need a backlight. Plasmas have really good refresh rates. As mentioned before, they refresh at about 600 Hertz. Unfortunately, they're a little bit thicker and they use a little bit more power than a typical LCD. So bear that in mind. If you want to save a little bit on your power, go with an LCD. If you like the contrast ratio of a plasma, uh, also the prices have been coming down. And actually, the new technology in plasmas also makes them a lot more cost effective as far, far as your power bill goes. So those are the technologies that are out there and available. So based on all of these uh, determinations, you should be able to choose which type of HDTV technology is right for you. Now, apart from the specs we've gone over today, there are some additional optional features that you might be interested if you're looking for a new HDTV. The first is internet connectivity, and this will vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, but for instance, this is our LG TV, and it has a smart TV feature. You can plug in your internet uh, connection to the back or use the wireless connection, and you can give you access to lots of online content, such as Netflix, Napster, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all sorts of things. Now, the software embedded in the TV is going to vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, but there's lots of them out there, lots of options, so check it out and see if there's anything that interests you. And lastly is 3D technology, which is also available. If you enjoy watching 3D shows and movies, you should definitely check on a 3D capable television. It needs to be at least 120 hertz refresh rate and it needs to be displayed as 3D ready. There's two types of 3D technology on the market today. The first is active 3D technology, which uses shutter glasses uh, that usually have batteries or they recharge and the shutters will switch off from eye to eye to create the 3D image. And then you have passive 3D technology, which uses simple polarized glasses like you see here. That's pretty much going to wrap it up for today's video. Uh, this has been our Newegg HDTV Technology Guide. My name is Paul. If you enjoyed today's video, please subscribe to our Newegg TV YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.